Bolognese and uh, just a regular tomato sauce is one. It has a meat product. And you can, you know, traditionally bolognese is made with, with uh, ground beef, ground veal, ground pork, Italian sausage. But for our purposes today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it out of uh, ground chicken. I think it's a nice product, and that's what we're going to do. Um, doesn't this pile of pots look good here? I was looking at it from the back of the room. Oh, uh, bush tea. I've also made bush tea today. You that, uh, that have been to the other classes, uh, I've worked in the, in the uh, tropics three or four or five times. I first worked in uh, the Caribbean, in St. Croix and the Virgin Islands. And then I went to Hawaii, two different stints. I worked on the big island at uh, Mauna Kea Beach Hotel. And uh, I opened the Manelli Bay Hotel in Lanai. And then later I had the opportunity to to retool uh, Hotel Palmia in Los Cabos, Mexico. But it, I noticed in every one of those places, they had uh, their own version of bush tea. And bush tea, as near as I could figure, um, used all the aromatics they happened to grow in the, that local area. And uh, it's their catch-all, uh, save-all, uh, uh, herbal medicinal product, you know, if you got a cold bush tea, that was in the, the Caribbean. So I, I put together a, a, a bush tea and, and the, the uh, recipes in there, and I made a bunch of bush tea here because it's been very popular for the other shows, but I think we should probably sweeten it up with a little honey. Come on, it's a big pot. <laughs> Everybody likes a little honey anyway. We're going to sweeten that up a little, and then I'll strain some off, and we'll have some bush tea here in a few minutes. But first, I want to sweeten that up and get that started. All right. So, in the professional kitchen, for the most part, we cook everything on high. So we'll start this on high, because what's it going to hurt? And for this project, I'm going to cook a little ground chicken, but I want to cook the ground chicken separately because there's a, a bit of moisture uh, released by, by any meat you're going to cook in, in the browning process, and I don't want that to, uh, to, inf you know, to dilute the, uh, the bolognese we're going to make. So at this point, I'm going to take the mirepoix, which was, anybody remember? 50% onions, 25% celery, Ah, that's the sound. That's a ticket. You know, it's funny. I suppose it's not that funny, but I just love to cook. And I love things like this, and I love the, the fact that I get the opportunity. Raimondo gets paid for working in the dirt, but I get the opportunity to to share my craft with a, a group of folks like yourselves that are engaged in, and interested in it as I am. So that's pretty exciting for me. Now I'm not going to add any garlic to this mixture, but if I were going to use garlic, I would add it later in the process because if I put it in now, the garlic's going to burn because it's in smaller, it's minced, it's smaller and it's going to burn. I don't want that. But since I'm going to deglaze with white wine anyway, in case it gets too hot, I have some white wine too. And as from my last classes, you'll recall the, the rule in cooking wine. Never cook with what you wouldn't drink. You know, why would you have it around anyway? So, uh, you know, people ask what kind of wine. Cook with whatever wine you like. So we're going to cook, turn this down just a hair. And we're going to start the, the ground chicken. Now, whether you, I'm using the ground chicken because that's what I made your uh, bolognese for your lunch today. But um, whether you use beef, chicken, Italian sausage, whatever, I think for a bolognese, it's best if you use a large grind. And I ground this in the in the kitchen, and I ground it very large for that reason because that's what I wanted the end product to be. And on the recipe, 
I put to uh, blend it with an immersion blender before you add the beef or the, the meat, whatever you're going to use. That's not... I'm going to continue this on a high heat because I want to brown it. I want it to brown. I want a little of that flavor. And what you're getting from browning, you're not searing in the juice. You're not doing anything like that. You're changing the surface flavor of the meat. It's a wide misconception that by searing something, you're going to hold in its juices. You're going to hold in its juices by not puncturing it with a, with a meat fork like that. You know That's what releases the, uh, the, the juices more than anything. Or if you take a roast out of the oven, like a standing rib roast or something, a prime rib, and uh, you take it right out of the oven, throw it on the, the board and start cutting it. Or your turkey at Thanksgiving. You need to let things rest. Everything, everything works better with a little rest. Give it some time. That way when you slice it, it the, the juice won't run out all over. You give it 20 minutes. It's not going to get cold. It's just come out of a 350 degree oven. It's got, a, it's got some room there. So you give it a little time to rest and everything's going to work out better. So at this juncture, I'm going to add some dry oregano, some dry basil. Obviously any of these projects are going to be better using fresh, but I don't know about you, when I go to the store, those little teeny packages for $1.89 of basil and, and oregano, I mean, you, all of a sudden you got eight, what I just used, you got eight bucks invested and you, you haven't got anything made yet. So I'm just going to show you that, that, uh, that you can use the dry products and get a quality product from that. Add a little salt to that. A little salt to our ground chicken. Th there is not. I used the exact marinade that I uh, gave you the, the recipe for because I, I think, I think um, you know, I talk about homogenous flavors. But lasagna is just the opposite. I want, and I'll show you when I uh, construct one, I want it to be exactly the opposite. I want everything in its place. I want every flavor to be uh, married but separate. And, and, and I'll show you how we're going to accomplish that. Fresh ground pepper, what could it hurt? Okay, what I'm doing with these vegetables is called sweating because I'm not, I'm sauteing them, but I'm sauteing them at a low temperature so that they don't brown, they don't caramelize. And uh, the, 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 I'm going to cook them halfway or clear, you know, and as the onions start to change color and start to be translucent, it's called clear. And I'm going to cook them to that stage. Our ground chicken is done. I'm going to turn that off. But the flavor is always incredibly enhanced the more you, you sweat it. It changes the complexion of that flavor. At this point, I'm going to add some of the, the tomatoes we roasted. And other than the roasted tomatoes, I'm going to make this. And I made the sauce for the, um, the lunch today just to to show you, I'm, I'm using canned tomatoes, diced tomatoes. They're, they're a good product, product for sauce. I must admit there are some of those products that aren't good, but for the most part, they're a good product for sauce. Now at this point, I, I might use some Prego or one of those. I, I'm, here I'm using the tomato sauce that we use, make in the kitchen. But at this point in time, I have all the ingredients in this pot for the uh, bolognese sauce. And the, like I said, the, the difference, main difference between bolognese and most uh, sauces, save the, <coughs> whoa. Save the meat. I'm not sure how I avoid that. Is the uh, the mirepoix? Because you know most uh, tomato sauces will generally be uh, uh, onion, shallots, garlic, 
tomatoes, the whatever herb, tomato basil sauce made from, from basil. Um, I'm going to let that cook for a little while. And, <coughs> and I'm going to add the ground chicken to this and let the flavor simmer in. But I'm going to spoon it in so that the, the liquid... So I don't want to add any liquid to the tomato sauce. 